Right now I'm sat in the Helix district of Newcastle and it's sat right on the outskirts of the city centre. If you don't know where it is or never heard of it before, it's directly west of St James's Park by about 100 metres and sits behind the Sandman Signature Hotel, the site of the old Scottish and Newcastle breweries. So it used to be called Science City here but now it's the, the Helix district a centre for scientific innovation, but why is it so important? What are all these fancy damn buildings around here now? And why should you have any interest in it whatsoever? Well, in this video, I'm going to take a closer look and uh, hopefully try and explain why it should be of interest. But I've also got a guy from the project to help answer some of those questions. It's coming up. Now, I'd never been inside the Helix district until about a week ago. I'd heard of it, and, I, and I'm assuming that probably most of you, if you have a look around the buildings here, you probably won't recognise that you're even in Newcastle city centre. But before I get into um, what this particular area is and this fascinating kind of scientific eco-centre, I'm going to talk about what this site used to be. So this site I'm sitting on now used to be uh, the old site of Scottish and Newcastle breweries and before that it was Newcastle breweries. Behind my left shoulder there you'll see a monument to uh, Newcastle breweries and uh, it was established in 1890 but there's a plaque there that monument dates back to 1770. I can't exactly find out what that refers to. If you do uh, just leave us a comment below. So yeah Newcastle breweries was on this site from the late 1890s and it was uh, I think 1927 that the first bottle of Newcastle brown ale was brewed on this site and it wasn't until a year later that the blue star logo was designed signifying the, the five founding breweries of Newcastle. Now by the mid 1900s Newcastle breweries was becoming as kind of a powerhouse of, of alcohol brewing in the north of England and in uh, 1960 it merged with Scottish breweries to become Scottish in Newcastle. Uh, of course, famously, I've just mentioned Newcastle Brown Ale. I've never been a Newcastle Brown Ale drinker, really. I've had a, a bottle here and there. When, uh, I, when I was cutting my teeth and start drinking when I was 15, 16 years old and getting in the pubs when I could, I used to drink uh, McEwan's Best Scotch, if you remember that advert. Would you mates like a drink? McEwan's Best Scotch, the one you've got to come back for. I remember when I was, uh, just before I joined the Air Force, when as soon as I left school, I uh, got a YTS in an engineering firm when we got paid £25 a week and on the Friday after giving £10 to me mum for board I went on to Lua Fell with my mates, the Fell and uh, blew about uh, £9 which was about 8 or 9 pints at the time I kid you not, I'm not proud of that but I could drink 8 or 9 pints of McEwen Scotch when I was about 16 years old didn't tell me mum and uh, the rest was uh, £6 for I think a weekly bus pass so yeah, McEwen's best scotch of my memories of the breweries. As we got into the early 2000s, uh, the brewery was starting to fall in hard times, some financial difficulties. 2004, the brewery sold the land that it was on to Newcastle City Council and other various stakeholders. And it wasn't until 2008 when the company was bought out by Heineken and Carlsberg that the whole site was demolished. But do you know who pressed the button to demolish and set off the explosives? of all the, uh, the plants around this site. If you didn't know, so Bobby Robson, he pressed the button. But there's only one building remaining from the Scottish and Newcastle Breweries era, and that's the Sandman Signature Hotel, which is still there now, just over there, which has now turned into a four-star hotel. And on the ground floor, there's a sports bar called the Shark Club. I would encourage you to check it out. I did a video there for the West Ham away game last season. Uh, fantastic place, place load about 40 screens. Anyway, I found a guy called Tom who works for the project and he's going to answer some of the, uh, the more deeper questions about exactly what this Helix Centre is. Tom, thanks for joining us. Um, can you explain what your roles and responsibility is around here? Yeah, no problem. Uh, so my name's Tom, uh, Tom Bramold. I work for Newcastle University and I'm part of the team that's bringing the Newcastle Helix development uh, forward. So it's, uh, looking around, it's, uh, there's lots of fancy buildings around here, but what exactly is going on? The site used to be the Scottish and Newcastle Brewery, so home to Newcastle Brown Ale was perhaps its most famous uh, aspect. 
Um, but when the brewery closed, the university, Newcastle University, got together with Newcastle City Council to see what we could do that was a bit different, uh, uh, a bit more ambitious than might be normal uh, for a brownfield site, an old industrial site on the city centre fringe. So Newcastle University, Newcastle City Council, and then Legal and General, so the big financial company, we've been working together to create uh, Newcastle Helix, which is what we call an innovation district. So a place to bring businesses of different types together. When you say innovation, what sort of innovation? There are three main types, I think, uh, going on here. So um, innovation around ageing. Um, so as a city, we're, we're very, very strong in ageing research and, and thinking about how we both meet the challenges of ageing, but also uh, seize the opportunities of people living longer. There's a lot of work here around data, so helping uh, businesses to unlock the information that they hold within the data that they've got. So can they become more efficient? Can they create new products based around the insight in their data? And then the other big one I think is around life sciences. So uh, the city again is very, very strong in, in life sciences research. And so we're, uh, we're, we've created a space where researchers and new companies working in life sciences can come together. What does life sciences research mean? So life sciences research is, is fascinating because it spans across a, a range of areas, but, but typically um, we're thinking about where we're using chemistry and biology to understand aspects of the, the human body and, and, and how it performs. And, and so what that looks like in real terms is we have companies based on site here uh, looking at, for example, how can we 3D print uh, new corneas for eyes um, or there's a company that looks at if you have a um, say a, a new joint uh, put into your body an artificial joint but it fails they do the inspection work to work out why it failed so life sciences can be can be down at the cellular level really really microscopic level or to, to quite a big scale but basically all about the science of our bodies and how we live basically we are the, the idea of an innovation district is to get the researchers closer to businesses and get ideas moving faster and so that we get things through to the new products and services quicker. Fascinating. So there's going to be some people who are watching this who think, oh, this is all a bit too important and I don't want to go there. Why would the general public be um, motivated or interested to come around here? We very deliberately want the site to be open. We don't want to create a private business park with gates and a security desk at the front. We want the site to be open. We want it to be a place where people come and explore, learn, share, participate, or just relax, have a, have, you know, take a cuppa and sit in one of the public spaces for a bit. Um, why would people be interested in what's happening here? Over the last five years, the site has come forward enormously. So, so what I mean by that is buildings are now open and things are happening. And so you can come here and you can participate in talks and debates. You can look at displays of information of innovative uh, thinking and products. You will see um, experiments happening, people testing uh, various bits of new equipment and so on. So. It's, it's an interesting, lively place to come, and that's growing more and more. So people should just uh, come down, have a look, have a cup of tea, have a piece of cake, and uh, if they want to find out more information about what's going on, where would they look? Easiest place to start is, uh, is on the website. Uh, so just Google Newcastle Helix and uh, you'll find the, the website, no problem. Um, and you can contact us as well and we love talking about the site, we love hosting people on site so if there are any questions people can just drop an email through the website and we'll get back to them but uh, it's, uh, it's meant to be a place for everybody in the city and region to come together, enjoy and be part of, of what's happening in terms of innovation and collaboration. Thanks Tom and if you'd like to know more about the Helix District uh, why don't you join me on one of my guided walks on a Sunday around St James's Park. Every Sunday 12 till half one it's only £10 a head. Check out my website tinesidelife.com get yourself down for a booking just check out the links but not just the Helix sector. 
I look at the Leasers Conservation Area, how important that is and its impact on the club and the stadium. The East Stand uh, area and Leasers Terrace, the history of that and how it impacts on the club and the stadium. Leasers Park, the history and how it impacts on the club as well. Uh, but also the Gallagher End and what's going on there, the complications uh, to the club and stadium developments, plus other things of historical interest. So get yourself on one of these guided walks. Until then, why don't you check out this video where I give you some more insights into the fascinating history of the Tyneside area.